Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing a tier list for all the Kung Fu Panda movies from Kung Fu Panda 1 all the way to the latest one, Kung Fu Panda 4. We're going to rank them tier list style, so let's dive right into it here. Now it's been a while since I've done a tier list video here, so the latest one I think was back on Christmas Day for the Die Hard movies, so you can go check that out. If you are new to the channel you do like these types of stuff, do consider hitting that subscribe button as we do all sorts of tier ranking. For this month alone we're going to be doing a tier ranking for the Kung Fu Panda movies, the Ghostbusters movies and the Monsterverse movies, so if you do like that type of stuff do consider hitting that subscribe button. But Let's get started with the tier ranking and I'll show you the screen here, so skadoosh. So as you can see, basically just four categories here. If you've seen my shorts of the ranking, you'll pretty much know where each movie is going to go, where I rank them. But from the worst to the best, so we've got the weakest of the bunch, we've got the decent watch, we've got the iconic movie, and then we've got the best of the franchise. So before I start mine, I want to know yours. How would you rank the Kung Fu Panda movies from the worst to the best? Which one is your favourite? Which one is your least favourite? Please let me know down in the comment section below. Because for me, I'll get started with the latest one that just came out, Kung Fu Panda 4. Now with this one and with all of them, I have to say, there's no terrible, terrible Kung Fu Panda movie, but there are some ones that are stronger than others. This one for me definitely isn't the strongest one in the franchise. It's most likely going to be the weakest of the bunch here. So we'll start off right now putting this one. Kung Fu Panda 4 goes for the weakest of the bunch. I did enjoy this movie, but for me, the Furious Five being missing really does play a huge factor because you can really feel their presence missed. The new character who is being voiced by Aquafina. Now, I have no problem with Aquafina in most of her roles, and it's not the voice character that really bugged me, but the chemistry that you have with her and Poe, I just feel like didn't really gel well. There wasn't enough time to really blend those characters and mesh them together well. And uh, you can see the twists and turns from a mile away. The movie really did get predictable, so there just wasn't really much you could surprise me with or expect from. And in terms of the villain too, I found the villain very, very underdeveloped and probably is the weakest of the whole villains from the franchise. You had the whole concept of her stealing the powers from the previous villains. That was the marketing campaign that you had for this movie. However, the way she's able to just grab everybody's powers, I felt like was so weak. And then in terms of all of that too, the way that it just goes about in the third act felt very rushed. You didn't really get to take that time and just enjoy what was happening. And even with the characters that do return, they're very underused. For example, Tai Lung, you get to see him, he's the one that really just has the dialogue in the movie, but then the rest of the villains, they're just sort of, A, they look different, and that's honestly just most likely going to be a budgeting reason because this movie is probably the lowest budgeted movie out of the whole four movies but the other villains just looked very different from how they were in the previous movies so for me it just felt like a bit of a letdown with this movie definitely had a fun time with it there were some great fight sequences in there some great voice casting that they had in this movie it wasn't enough to hold it compared to like the rest of the movies so i do feel like a, it's an enjoyable movie and it's definitely going to get some new eyes to the franchise. Even the director came out and said that this is not going to be the last movie of the whole franchise. So we'll most likely be getting more, but some pieces were missing from the puzzle. So yeah, Kung Fu Panda 4 is definitely the weakest of the franchise. Now for the next one we've got, which was Kung Fu Panda 3. This one definitely had some enjoyable moments. I really enjoyed the villain Kai in this movie. But I felt like there was just a lot of unbalance in the movie because you've got one focus where it's about Kai and what he's going for and how he wants to steal everybody's chi to then the next portion of the movie having Poe learning how to become a panda. So there was definitely some imbalance in terms of like the tone and the pacing and like what they were going for in terms of the storytelling. But the way it all just comes together and just combines everything with everybody teaming up, all the pandas and Poe and the Furious Five all being part of the movie and working well to learn how to get Chi, to learn how to defeat the villain Kai, I think worked really well. Now, again, not the strongest in the whole franchise, but there is some, uh, but there is a lot of enjoyable moments in it, but it doesn't really do anything new compared to like the last couple of movies. You kind of see where it's going when it comes to Poe's journey. In terms of like the beginning of the movie, he needs to learn how to get in at peace and he needs to learn the way of the Chi only for the end of the movie here for him to get Chi. So I just think that you kind of got that a little bit of predictability in there but overall in terms of the movie itself I really did enjoy the movie when it comes to how everything came about together I'll be honest the first half of the movie wasn't as strong as like the second half of the movie in my personal opinion but the introduction of Poe's real dad and that dynamic between Poe's 
real dad and Poe's adopted dad, I thought worked really well, which again, I'll mention in Kung Fu Panda 4 was one of the better parts of the movie, just seeing their dynamic together. So I wish we got to see more of that. But then overall, the movie itself, you do get a lot of enjoyment out of it, but it's definitely not one of the most memorable ones or the one that you go back to rewatch more, go back to rewatch as many times as you would with the other movies. So with Kung Fu Panda 3, this one I'm going to put at a decent watch. You get some enjoyment out of it, like I said, but definitely not one that you'll remember over and over again. Okay, now for the next one we've got is the sequel to the original one. So this is Kung Fu Panda 2. Now for me, I'm going to say this right now, it's my favourite movie of the whole franchise. So I guess you'll know already where it's going, so we'll put it up right now. Kung Fu Panda 2 is going with the best of the franchise. This movie, I just feel like, works really well. You get to explore more of the backstory with Poe. There's some great sequences when it comes to like the fighting and the kung fu choreograph that you get in the movie. I'm loving what they do with the whole character journey that Poe does go on. The third act in particular for me is my favourite third act of all the movies in the franchise and even the villain too. Just I love what they do, sprinkling like the little backstory that you get and the villain being behind what happens to Poe's parents just absolutely works so well. The Furious Five are just elevated more in this movie so everything about it just works. All the characters and their journey that they go on I feel like elevates this movie to something else. Now granted the first movie I really enjoyed but for me the sequel is probably the best of the whole franchise. It's one that I've rewatched multiple times along with the first one obviously but this one I just feel like has a great standout. The villain is very memorable but like I said the weird design in the fourth movie just really highlights the difference in terms of like the budget. But what happens throughout the whole movie and what happens with Poe I think is one of the most fascinating things and one of the things that you really do follow and enjoy what he goes through in the story arc that he has. Even Master Shifu too and that balance as well. It just works all together so well and you start to learn and develop more with like Tigris's character too. So like I mentioned, Furious 5 really do have a bigger impact in this movie. And just the way Poe is able to overcome and defeat the villain, I think just works absolutely well. So yeah, Kung Fu Panda 2, definitely the best of the franchise. My favorite movie in the whole franchise here. So we come to the first movie, the one that started it all off, and I haven't really talked about it much in terms of the voice casting, but Jack Black honestly is the perfect voice casting for this, for Poe. He is just nailed on when it comes to like the one-liners, the delivery, just everything about it works really well. I rewatched the movies right before Kung Fu Panda 4, because I'll be honest, it's been a while since I've seen these movies, but I forgot how hilarious Jack Black is in this movie, and just the way that everything comes about, a way he's able to become the Dragon Warrior, and even just the whole dynamic of Master Shifu and Po, and how Master Shifu figures out how to use food as a training method to teach Po how to learn Kung Fu, how to become the Dragon Warrior, I thought was just a stroke of genius. And then of course, one of my favorite villains in the franchise, Tai Lung, probably the most memorable villain that you'll get in the whole franchise. And just that whole third act, that whole final battle, I think just works really well. You get an amazing character journey, a character study with Poe, with Master Shifu. Even what cracks me up too is Uguay's character journey too. One of the best moments in the whole movie is when Master Uguay finds out that Tai Long has escaped. He has this little meeting with Master Shifu after they announced that Poe has become the Dragon Warrior. Just his thought process, he finds out that Tai Long has escaped and then he decides, you know what, it's time for me to just go into the spirit realm. That scene always cracks me up with his choice. But just again, overall, the characters that you introduce, the story arc that they go for, and even just the animation too, just looks absolutely stunning. Even to this day, like I said, I rewatched it before Kung Fu Panda 4, and even the animation still holds up. So yeah, when it comes to the original one, the Kung Fu Panda movie that kicked it all off, this one is definitely going under iconic movie. A movie you can honestly just rewatch countless times. So yeah, definitely an enjoyable movie. But this about wraps it up for the tier ranking here. So for me, it comes with Kung Fu Panda Panda 2, the original Kung Fu Panda, then it's Kung Fu Panda 3, and then the weakest one would be Kung Fu Panda 4, but like I said, all the movies are enjoyable and worth checking out, so let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. How would you rank these movies? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Please let me know down in the comment section below, but that about wraps up for this video, for this tier ranking here. Again, keep an eye out. There is going to be the imaginary movie review coming out either today or tomorrow, so subscribe so you're not missing out on that, but thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. This is YK Reviews. Peace.